Charles has cancer. Charles, outside of Christ, you are my everything. It shrank down to the size of like a, like a hazelnut. You know, Lynn, when I first came in, you had that far away look like you get when something's really bothering you. I just want to sit down and cry my eyes out. For heaven's sake, Lynn, what is it? But Deacon Hall wanted me to drop the budget numbers by. And I'm trying to move on with my life, and I wish she would do the same. Gina's told you all the things we have to offer. Maybe, but not what we need. If we're only attracting couples without kids, we're failing. Mentoring, babysitting, what's the difference? The difference is you become a head deacon or not. I think God has just answered our prayer because mm. I got an idea. Here we are. These are the cookies those youngins put together. They are certainly creatively decorated. Aren't they though? Gummy bears and all. <laughs> but we'll get back to the cookies. Right now, I just wanna make sure I understand. Your grandkids love making videos, right? They really do. They run all over the place with their iPhones, shooting whatever. Then they go over to Leslie's and get her kids to edit what they've shot. And are they good at what they do? Really good. It's unbelievable what they're able to do. <laughs> it's way out of my realm of understanding. Oh, honey. When it comes to technology, I'm two points below plant life. <laughs> but kids nowadays live and breathe it. They do. They really do. Got to be honest with you, though. When it comes to technology and media, I stand next to Deacon Hall. Just give me a good book. I love a good book. Problem is, I got two generations behind me that can't spell the word. With them, it's media, media, very possibly media. So I gotta be honest, I've been doing some, some thinking. And I think we'd be very, very foolish not to use media to get kids back in church. If you do that, I believe my grandkids would be interested again. Up to this point, they have refused to go to church. Say what? Refused? <laughs> oh, dear one, I know I'm cranky, but I gotta be honest. If they were under my roof eating my food, they'd go where I told them to go. Now, when they grow up and they're out, that's another thing. But under my roof, Sunday's church day. But like I said, I'm cranky. I know I should be firmer, but they hurt so much because they're not being raised by their parents. Oh, you just shamed me. I can see that tender grandmama's heart coming out. Yeah, okay. I mean, I understand, truly I do. <laughs> Guess what? I only want to hear it if it's a good thing, because after my visit with the ladies, I am in my happy place. I don't want anybody messing with my happy place today. Well, what I'm about to tell you will definitely keep you in your little happy place. Yippee! <laughs> Let's have it. But anyway, I talked to my sister, and she's definitely agreed to allow her son to come meet with you. She needs help with his motivation. She can't figure it out, so she definitely appreciates you. Oh, that's 
awesome. That's, <laughs> I'm telling you, Gina, if you can get a youth on the right path, you change generations. That's exciting. Happy place. I'm still my happy place. Well, I told you this news would keep you in your little happy place. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> that is scary. <laughs> oh, where was I? Yeah. Oh, great. Is his mom with him? Does he look like he wants to even be here? Happy days. All right, sweetie, send him in. Bye. Well, come on in. I don't bite, and last time I checked, I bathed recently, so I think it's kind of safe. Do you stand the whole time? I know what you're doing. You're trying to make a quick way of escape, aren't you? My mom says you wanted to talk to me. Well, I was kind of hoping you'd want to talk to me. Why would I want to do that? Ooh, did it testy today. Oh, honey. Listen, let's just get down to it. Your mama and your Aunt Gina love you to pieces. Your Aunt Gina talks about you all the time. They're worried about you, and they truly just want what's best for you. You mean what's best for them? At least my mom and dad. Excuse me? My mom and dad only want one thing from me. Well, what's that? For me to take over my father's business one day. Wow. Well, he must trust you a lot. But what business is that? He runs an auto part business. He owns three stores. Well, gee whiz, that's kind of impressive. My guess is you're not interested. You could say that. Well, there's got to be something you are interested in. Let me ask it another way. What is it you want? What is it you would like to do? Well, I don't know. But I have been doing some thinking. Yeah? About a lot of things. Well, want to share? Well, I guess what I really want to do is become a police officer. No kidding. Wow. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty honorable profession. I'm curious, though. Why are you interested in that work? Well, I like forensics. Forensics? How come? Well, I like to figure out who did it. Oh, you're kind of a whodunit kind of guy, huh? <laughs> oh, I like that. But you know, come to think of it, I think most agencies kind of separate being a police officer from forensics. So which one are you interested in? Both. Both? Hmm. Well, look, I'd have to do some research. But I think I remember that a police officer generally kind of secures the crime scene, and then he protects the evidence, and the forensics folk come in and they collect the evidence, and then they take it back to the lab and they examine it. I think that's how they do it. But I've got a really good friend, and you would like him a lot, who's been in the police work for years. And I can call him if it's okay with you and find out how they do it locally. Would you like me to do that? Yeah, that would be great. He'd enjoy working with you. Hmm. You know, I got an idea. See what you think of this. What about if I could get you a one-month internship in the police department and a one-month internship at the forensics lab? You know, kind of let you look at both sides of the fence and see the ins and outs of both, and maybe it could help you decide if you liked one better than the other. 
me, is that something you'd be interested in? Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, wow, I'd love to arrange it for you. But what about my parents? Oh, honey, don't worry about them. Yes, we have to get their permission. But I'll just start with your Aunt Jean and we'll kind of work up from there. You know, Bram, God knows every desire of your heart and he loves you. And so it's the desire of his heart to bring forth the desire of your heart. So, I don't know. Why don't we just trust him? Yeah, I guess. Bren? You guess? Well, you may know God, but you don't know my parents. <laughs> Honey, what I know about God and his miracles trumps your parents, I guarantee you. You watch. He'll get this done. Okay. See ya. Bye. Bye. Hey, I like him. Yeah. Meet you for lunch? 20 minutes. All right, see ya. Bye. I like him. So, you wanted to see me? Hey, guess, what are those? Pork rinds. Yuck. Oh, yuck to that sushi right there. I mean, where's that little raw thing been before they stuck it in there? First of all, it's not raw. It's cooked crab. And secondly, no worse a place than that little piggy's been before they stuck his skin in a fry pot. Truce. Truce. Anyway, how'd the meeting go? I mean, he didn't seem particularly upset when he left. Could be because for the first time ever, somebody actually asked him what he wanted. So what did he say? He wants to go into law enforcement, be a police officer, go into forensics. For real? I mean, he's never told anybody in the family that. Could be that he didn't think anybody listened to him. According to him, his dad specifically, his dad's already laid his life out to him. Hmm. You know what, though? I mean, his dad does have a lot of businesses. And, I mean, he wanted him to take over. So that only seems natural. Not when you consider you can't determine somebody's life for them. If they force him into going to these businesses, he's going to be miserable. Is that what his mom and dad want? A son with a miserable life? See, this is not going to go down well. Bren? not giving a flip about those businesses and run them into bankruptcy, that ain't gonna go down well either. This is not good. This is definitely not good. Look, how about if you convince his parents to let me arrange month-long internships? You know, one at the police department, one at a forensics lab. Who knows, maybe he's gonna find out he didn't like either one of them and go back to considering taking over his dad's businesses. On the other hand, he just might find his life's work. Well, I mean, it sounds like a good idea. I'll give you that. I'll try. Good. Tomorrow. You coward. And not ashamed of it. Oh, that's so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, may I help you? Um, I'm just looking around. Well, help yourself. If there's anything I can help you with, let me know. No, I'm just uh, checking things out, you know, considering the possibilities. Well, you're not planning on robbing the place, are you? Or would you possibly consider a family-friendly kidnapping? And I got just the right person in mind. 
and I gladly pay the ransom as long as you promise to keep her. Are you in your right mind? Man, I'm sorry. Someone in this place is beginning to rub off on me in the wrong way, and that's not a good thing. Now, where were we? You were asking if I wanted to rob the place. Oh, man, I'm sorry again. Let's start over. I'm Deacon Hall, and if there's anything I can help you with, let me know. Have a seat. Jack Lindley. Actually, I'm looking for a new church and uh, checking out what this one had to offer before I show you what I have to offer. Well, I don't know what you're looking for, but you certainly be welcomed here. I'm sure I would be. You see, I have a great deal of leadership experience, and I'm also confident that whoever it is that's got this bad influence on you, I can take care of. You know, provide a little adult supervision. <laughs> I don't know about that because... And not only that, I'm one of the biggest fundraisers in the business, and I'm also very generous in my own giving. Well, we could certainly use a very, very generous member. You certainly could. And most leaders are generous. Excuse me? If I'm correct, churches are always in need of things like uh, new choir robes, new hymnals. Well, we don't use hymnals. We can correct that. But here's my point. I want to be the main money man. And the ones who handle the money should always have the appropriate titles and the appropriate perks. Well, we need money, that's for sure. But I have to warn you, our pastor focuses a lot on servanthood and not on positions. Now, I've been trying to be the head deacon here for, I don't know how, let me not even worry about that. By the way, can you do any manual labor? Our children's softball field needs fixing up. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but I have a, a touch of arthritis in this shoulder. But anyway, let's leave these kinds of things to the little people. Little people? Yes, you know what I mean. Let me focus my energy on being a uh, leader and a task manager. And uh, right now, what I need to do is to speak to the pastor so we can come to an understanding. Yeah, an understanding. Well, good luck with that. Man, let me tell you, I'm a deacon here, and I've been sniffed like a dog. I've had to crawl through bushes to spy on a fellow deacon like a peeping Tom. I've had my pants dropped. And don't let me even get started about the clown. And the, there's a stall in the men's bathroom. Have you any idea what it's like to be having a personal moment and be rudely interrupted by a pastor who can't seem to mind her own business. This pastor? Brother, I have been through humiliation beyond man's understanding. That woman has been the bane of my existence. Woman? What is her name? Lynn Jenkins. I thought she was the pastor at that church on Billsbury Road. She is, was. Man, that church would have taken so much to bring up to cold. We decided to move in with this congregation to help with the expenses. Let me tell you what this woman did to me. I graciously offered my services, along with a check for $2,000. And it might have been as much as $10,000. $10,000? Oh, no. We're not going to have that. We need to go and talk to her right now. Come on. Let's go. Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure. Reverend Jenkins, I, no, we want to talk to you. In heaven. So, little missy, here's another... Oh, let us pray. Father, give me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can. 
and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. 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 Now we're back to the Missy thing again, are we? How many times do I have to tell you? It's Pastor Missy. Ha, ha, ha. Well, this is Mr. Lindley. I believe we've already met. Well, this fine man of God was looking for a church in which he could serve. I was. But did you know? What I know is he came by our small broken down church and offered you $10,000. Two. I would have offered a lot more if you hadn't been so insulting. Offered, bribed, offered, bribed. I know there's a difference in there somewhere. Mm. Which reminds me though, Early this morning, I was reading this wonderful scripture. Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he said to them, Truly, I say, which means he wasn't lying, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Are you trying to tell and me? And he continued for emphasis. And he said, Again, I say to you, it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. I'm just saying. Well, what I'm just saying is this. This is another example of you losing your ever-loving mind. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I strongly suggest you reconsider my offer. Now, I'm willing to let bygones be bygones if you will allow me to offer my friendship, so to speak. All right. Let me see if I understand the situation correctly. You both want to become leaders in the church, right? Of course. I demand it. So more specifically, Deacon Hall, you want to become head deacon. Well, I've made that perfectly clear. A time or two. And Mr. Lindley, Evidently, we are not going to get any financial support from you unless we make you a leader. Absolutely. It's reasonable. Okay. Let me tell you where I stand. And I mean this sincerely. I only want to surround myself with leaders of excellence. Leaders to whom the Lord can one day enthusiastically say, well done, you good and faithful servant. Now, don't you both want to hear those words? Of course, we will. Now, that word servant is really interesting to me because it's the exact definition of the Greek word for deacon. Diakonos means servant, one who Waits. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's where they got the word waiter from. So, what's that got to do with it? Yeah, I'd like to know. Well, the more we've been talking, the more I've been thinking that I have misjudged people before. Maybe, in this case, I'm doing it again. Maybe you two are true servants of God. Maybe you are called to be great leaders, the kind of leaders that I want to surround myself with. So as I've been thinking about it, it dawned on me that there are two tools that can be used to help you both become the best possible kind of leaders, leaders that are capable of raising up generations to follow. So in the spirit of let bygones be bygones, I happen to have those tools. Would you permit me to present them to you? And I want to do it from the heart. Well, she's finally beginning to see the light. I told you I'd be an asset to the church if I could get her to see things my way. Yes, yes. Well, I'm sure perhaps I've made a mistake again in this case. So let me go get the tools and let's just see what God's going to do. All right? Well, I am getting excited. I'll finally get my badge for head deacon. I think it's really working out well. Miracles happen. I'm glad you came. Servants of God, are you ready? Yes. Yes. 
Here are your tools. One toilet plunger, one toilet brush. Now go and serve the Lord with gladness. She did it again. She's crazy, just plain crazy.